Malik. Abu Hassan Malik is an associate professor and a, a student uh, of, of Islam uh, and has studied for many, many years. And we brought him on the show to do several things. One, there was an article in Philadelphia Magazine. I don't know if everyone had a chance to actually review the article, but the article was basically talking about the radicals among us, uh, and the article addressed this, what they called a uh, form of spreading Islam. Uh, they identified the prison system as one of being, one of those venues and that how the radical Islam is being uh, taught in prisons and people are coming out as a result of this radical Islam and they are participating in criminal activity. That was the one thing. And then the article also tried to give a history of Islam in Philadelphia. They went back to the Nation of Islam and, and other uh, uh, religious, uh, and I, I don't want to say sex, but I don't think it's another way to describe it, uh, sex and, 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 and sex, not S-E-X, but S-E-C-T, mm-hmm. um, and try to describe how the evolution, if you will, of Islam has come from one point to another. And then they spoke with uh, not many people, uh, n- uh, spoke with one person who has a, a slanted version on what the uh, Kitab or the Quran and the Sunnah and people that follow that, uh, what they're actually doing. And, and I know that those are like broad terms to, to, to the general public and people may not understand what those things mean, but we, we are prayerful, uh, inshallah, that after the hearing today, and that's what we're calling it, we're calling it a hearing, a hearing that is giving you an opportunity to hear what Islam is about, that people have a better understanding of some of the terms that I use. One of the things that concerns us about this is that Subsequent to the article, there was another police shooting, and in fact, there was a statement made by the police commissioner um, that was an inappropriate statement. That statement was attached to um, the individual that committed or allegedly committed the shooting, and that statement was a a statement that encouraged violence. Um, In other words, he wasn't shot enough, and there was a statement that kind of insinuated that the there is some FBI report that indicates that there is this radical form of Islam um, that is lawless, and and if you if you understand anything about the religion of Islam and lawless, you know that they can't it's an oxymoron they can't they cannot coexist they in fact diffuse each other. Islam is about a series of laws, rulings and and, and governing actions of how. One should live their life, and lawlessness is the complete opposite of that. And people do whatever they want to do with, without regard to the consequences of that or the, without regard to the consequences of answering for their actions uh, with their Lord. So what we are going to attempt to do today uh, is first we're going to try to explain uh, Islam. Explain Islam. And, and, and I said perhaps because we, we only have a certain uh, amount of time, and we're going to try to explain uh, the stance that Islam has on crime and on violence. And it's important to note that this is the stance of Islam, whether it's in an Islamic country or it's in a country that is uh, predominantly Christian, like the United States. Um, Some people feel that because this is a non-Muslim country that the the laws change, the laws of Islam change, the, the, the religion of Islam changes, or the position that Islam has on violence and crime changes, but I think that by the end of it is our prayer that by the end of uh, uh, this segment that that will be clarified. That will be clarified. For clarity's sake, from my perspective, why is it different? <clears throat> Excuse me, because we hear about you know in quotes throwing up the air quotes radical Christian fundamentalists. We hear about radical lots of things, which essentially are people who take the religion, bastardize it for their own use, go out there and commit crimes and then somehow wrap themselves in the religion. Is it really any different? I mean, essentially people are not acting on Islam or acting on Christianity or even being guided by it. They're acting themselves and then hiding behind the religion. Well, I think the first thing that should be mentioned um, whenever we deal with these issues um, is that what we find in the likes of these articles um, that we find in in Philadelphia Magazine, and even before that, going back to after 9-11, when you have the Guardian newspaper out of London, um, what happens is you have people making statements that are sweeping, sweeping indictments, um, painting things with a broad brush. And the problem with that is that it doesn't give the right 
to the situation. It doesn't bring about information that the people of society need to understand these matters in, in an intellectual way. Um, there's an old saying in the Arabic language, الحق لا يعرف بالرجال ولكن الرجال يعرفون بالحق that the truth is not known by men, but rather men are understood or known by the truth. So we don't judge a faith or a way by the actions of individuals. Rather, we judge those individuals by their actions. And we judge those individuals in the scales of that belief or that faith system. Um, our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he made a very beautiful statement for God to this matter. He said, Al-bayyinatu ala al-mudda'i wal-yaminu ala man ankara That the burden of proof is upon the one who makes the claim. That the burden of proof is upon the one who makes the claim. In the Holy Quran, in our Holy Book, the Noble Quran, Allah says, Hatu burhanukum in kuntum sadiqeen. Bring your proof if you are truthful. So we are a people who believe in evidences and we believe in proofs and we believe in establishing these matters clearly before the creation so as to be just and equitable with regards to these matters. So when we find individuals, as we said, making these sweeping indictments, uh, it's very unjust and very unfair. But what would be more befitting is not to ask, is there a group of individuals out there who are doing these things in the name of Islam, if they were, which we're not even making that claim. These individuals are doing these acts, the acts of crime and criminality, and they're doing that for for those matters. But what would be more befitting is to ask, what is Islam's stance with regards to these crimes? That would be the more befitting question, not are there a group of individuals who are doing these things in the name of Islam, if they are, but what is Islam's position and stance with regards to these matters? Um, this is the more fair and just question. Um, the first thing that I would, would submit with regards to this matter is what is Islam's stance on safety and security in the earth? Uh, Islam, one of the fundamental principles of our religion, uh, falls back or goes back to the issue of safety and security in the earth. For it, I, it is our belief that without safety and security, People could not go to the store for their daily needs. They couldn't go to school to learn. They couldn't even go to the mosque to pray, to the church to pray, whatever it may be. People would not be able to go about in their daily lives to do their daily activities except that there is safety and security established in the earth. And there are many verses in our holy book that talk about safety and security in the earth and many prophetic traditions of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, that also talk about this. Um, there's one tradition that I wanted to mention right now where our prophet said, whoever wakes safe and secure, free from fear for himself and his family, and is in good health, and has enough provisions to last him for his day, it is as if the whole world has been laid at his feet. So the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, began with saying that whoever wakes in safety and security, free from fear for himself and his family, and to the end of the narration he said, it is as if the whole world has been laid at his feet. Again, safety and security is a thing in Islam that is paramount. It is the, the uppermost importance in our religion. And establishing it is something that is, is beyond a shadow of a doubt. So for anyone to claim that Islam believes in this lawlessness or anarchy, as I've read in some articles like the Guardian newspaper, they call it Islamic anarchists. And as our brother said, this is an oxymoron. Um, anarchy is a belief, is a thing with a belief of uh, not having laws, not having a system. And to, to try to use those two, to try to give those two descriptions in one place, again, it shows that these individuals have no journalistic integrity whatsoever. And this is a problem that we find um, in many of these newspapers. People are playing upon the fears of society, and they're feeding into those fears, and it's not bringing about a dialogue. It's not bringing about that which is necessary to bring understanding to this matter, as we said, an intellectual understanding to these matters, and I think this is where it begins. But this, the basis of Islam, as we have mentioned, is the call to Tawheed, which means the oneness of God and the worship of one God alone, ascribing no partners with him. And it also calls to being kind to one's parents. It also calls to being obedient to one's parents. It also calls to uh, ridding ourselves from the affairs of sin and transgression, like murder, like theft, armed robbery, and the likes of those matters. And if there's time, I'm sure, hopefully we will have time, I'll be able to read some of Islam's positions on some of these crimes specifically, like murder and like armed robbery and the likes of dressing up in women's garb and all of these things that there are actual narrations that we can point to to describe how heinous and evil.